Namaste everyone. Welcome back to Tathastu ICS. I am Umang Khokhar, a faculty for Environment and Ecology, and today we are going to explore a fascinating journey how India's conservation story has evolved through centuries from our ancient civilizations to the modern policies. This isn't just about wildlife. It's about our culture, our beliefs, and our identity as a civilization that has revered wildlife and nature since time immemorial so let's begin let's come to ancient india first the roots of conservation lies in ancient india so in india wildlife has never been a separate subject or separate from the human life if we go back thousands of years of to our ancient scriptures and literature we find animals and plants woven deeply into our morals culture and spiritual fabric from the panchatantra to the jataka tales animals weren't just the characters they were teachers each fable each story carried a moral highlighting harmony compassion and respect for all the living beings our gods too too they are deeply associated with the animals lord vishnu's avatars including varaha the boar the narsimha lion man goddess durga who rides on a lion or a tiger and then lord shiva's companion is nandi and a bull so and then we have lord ganesh himself symbolizing the harmony of man and nature even the upanishads and the purans mention the sacred grooves or the devavans which are known by different names today are the protected forests patches which are dedicated to the deities one of the earliest forms of community based conservation and remember india is among the mega diverse countries of the world home to almost 7 to 8% of the recorded species though we are only occupying 2.4% of the earth's land area that's an incredible reflection of our ecological wealth and the diversity we are having let's come to the harappan civilization moving to this indus valley civilization or the harappan civilization we find around 2500 bc archaeological evidence gives us the seals which are showing the motifs of tigers elephants rhinoceros indicating the close coexistence with wildlife then their urban planning water conservation systems and the drainage they show a deep understanding of the ecology even if not expressed as conservation the principle of living sustainably was already there then let's come to the arthashastra or the modern period kautilya's arthashastra around 4th 7th century bc it's another crucial text it mentions about the protected forests fines for harming the animals and even the role of officers called the vanapal or the forest superintendents Hunting was recognized as both a royal sport and a duty but under strict regulations the emphasis was on the balance not exploitation then came emperor ashok one of the first rulers in the world history to legislate for the animal welfare his fifth rock edict prohibits the killing of certain species and orders the protection for forests birds and animals Now this marks the first known state policy of wildlife conservation in India. Coming to the medieval times or the medieval India, in that time we find wildlife continued to hold a very important place in the Indian culture. Uh, the Mughal emperors, especially Akbar, Jahangir, they maintained a detailed natural history records. Jahangir was known for his keen observation of animals, birds, and even recording the species behavior in his memoirs the tuzuk e jahangiri beautiful mughal paintings of that era of the lions peacocks and the cranes reflect not just the aesthetics but the ecological awareness the royal gardens and the hunting reserves were maintained but the intent was always not destructive it was often about the prestige the order and the controlled interaction with nature from harmony to exploitation we come to the colonial period as we are stepping into the colonial period or that colonial era we see a dramatic shift now under the british rule 
hunting became a symbol of power and dominance. Between 1875 and 1925, it's estimated that almost 80,000 tigers were killed in India. However, the late 19th century also saw the first selective conservation laws in India, be it the Madras Wild Elephant Preservation Act 1873, Wild Birds Protection Act of 1887. These were limited in scope, but they laid the foundation of a formal conservation law in India. And let's not forget the Madras Presidency, which was once called the land of tigers, the Poliars, witnessed a sharp decline in the tiger population, which was illustrating what is happening as the result of the unregulated hunting. Now, during this time only, we saw an interesting figure coming up, Jim Corbett. He started as a hunter of the man-eating tigers, but later transformed into a pioneer conservationist. His work and the writings inspired the creation of India's first national park, the Haley National Park, which was later renamed as Jim Corbett, in his honour only. The era of legal protection comes after the independence. So India soon realised that there is an urgent need to protect its dwindling wildlife. So by the 1950s, cheetahs were already extinct in India, to be precise, 1952. And nearly 90% of the leopards had vanished. And of course, the tigers too. The government took significant steps for protecting them, be it the rhinos, tigers, elephants, all of that began during this time. And in 1972, India got its landmark Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 that was enacted. It's our sole and most comprehensive legislation for the protection of wildlife even today. The act categorized species into different schedules regulating the hunting and established the protected areas, the national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, community reserves and conservation reserves. In 1973, we launched the Project Tiger, a turning point in our conservation history. It was led by Kailash Sankhla, the famous Tiger Man of India, being the first project director of Project Tiger. Now, this project emphasized that protecting the tiger means we are protecting the entire ecosystem. So, we cannot have conservation in isolation. So, with that, we eventually developed and further led to the establishment of the NTCA. The 1980s and 1990s saw a rise of individuals also who were shaping the research. The Wildlife Institute of India 1982 became a center of training and research. The National Wildlife Action Plan guided the policies at the national level. And the incredible individuals like Jamal Ara, the bird women of India, S.P. Shahi, the wolf man of India, they made remarkable contributions on ground for protecting the major species. Conservation now began to include the community participation also, recognizing that the local people are the real guardians of biodiversity. Here we are also talking about the tribal people who are living in close coordination with the wildlife. Then, today in India, or today's wildlife conservation is not just about protecting the species. It's about protecting the entire ecosystem amidst the global climate change. So our policies now have integrated biodiversity conservation with the climate action. So be the 2025-26 budget. Significant allocations have been made for the conservation and ecosystem restoration. And in the recent years, India has made global headlines with the Project Cheetah the world's largest intercontinental translocation that has happened and that has brought cheetahs back to India from Namibia and South Africa. Now, this is after happening after decades, seven decades of extinction. So, India is also present at the global platforms and it is signatory to major conventions like the UN CBD. Then we have the CMS, the Bonn Convention on Migratory Species. Okay. From the sacred groves of ancient India to the protected landscapes of modern times, our journey tells us a powerful story, a story of civilization that has always viewed nature not as a resource but as a relative, a member of our extended family. India continues to reflect the same spirit with the robust network of protected areas. With more than 107 national parks, more than 500 wildlife sanctuaries and 18 biosphere reserves, 93 Ramsar sites of the wetlands that are protecting our entire ecosystems. 
Beyond this legal protection, our sacred groups, the communities, specifically the tribals, we have communities like Bishnois and the traditional practices across the regions which are upholding the ethos of living in harmony with nature. Together with these efforts represents that India's enduring ecological conscience is a living tradition of conservation that blends the culture, science and community. Now we have got a step ahead. Today we are using the modern technology for the wildlife monitoring, the camera traps, the drone based monitoring to scientific wildlife census, radio collaring and the AI based data analysis. These all innovations are helping us to track the animal movements, assess the populations and protect the habitats with the unprecedented precision, combining the ancient wisdom with the modern science. So when we talk about wildlife conservation in India, we are not just talking about the protected areas, we are talking about the continuation of a 5000 year old philosophy, which is now empowered with the technological innovation and the community participation. As the students, you need to know it's very important for you to be aware of how India's civilizational roots are blending it with the modern environment framework. It's the blend of the tradition, te technology and the policy which is truly defining India's environmental history. Thank you very much.